Welcome back. Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle. Hey, Mark, what's on your mind today? Hi, Tom. I serve as executive director for Democracy Watch News, a nonprofit news organization that covers challenges to democracy around the world. And this week I provided testimony before the Seattle City Council on our city initiative 135, which would provide permanent publicly owned affordable housing. And the reason I did that is because extreme poverty and lack of safe, secure housing has an enormous negative impact on the workings of any democracy because people struggle survive day to day, of course, are much less likely to participate in activities like voting. So our current, our city currently has operation, along with other cities around the country, what I call economic refugee camps. So some new apartments here are renting for up to $5,000 a month, and there are more than 25,000 people living on the street or in emergency and transitional housing across the state. You know, meanwhile, wages remain stagnant. So I think we have a great opportunity. And by the way, Tom, in Vienna, Austria, around 60% of all of the housing is either government or owned or subsidized. And I think what would happen is we would be able to set up a government agency that would provide seed money to tax exempt bonds to build new permanent publicly affordable housing. It's also being considered. Uh, similar proposals are currently being used in California and in that assembly and in the legislature in Hawaii. So I think Seattle has a chance to set a standard and serve as a model for other communities across the nation by dedicating ourselves to uh, providing affordable housing. And then, you know, to build the housing development, they, this government agency would start by getting a government grant to seed each project. And then from there, the developer could sell bonds to investors based on the estimated value of future rents to pay for land acquisition and construction. And then once the construction is complete, the tenants move in. Uh, any profit generated by the rent after maintenance expenses and loans will be put towards future social housing projects. So I'm, I'm for it. I'm all in on this. And I would really like to see this uh, as a model for the rest of the country because I really think that sometimes these – these homeless encampments, which I call economic refugee camps, if they were located on international borders, they would probably qualify for assistance from the Red Cross, the United Nations, and other humanitarian right. relief organizations. I think, but I think you're there right. are, now because there are oranges and freeways and in vacant lots, you know, they just tend to get swept by police and then ignored by our national political leaders who don't seem to have anything to say about homelessness. I haven't heard anybody in Washington, D.C. take on this. Yeah, uh, but you know, Louise. Louise was telling me this morning that our our governor Tina Kotek here in Oregon, our brand new governor, has just submitted a uh, 125 million, if I'm remembering right, uh, dollar budget to uh, build affordable uh, housing and 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 you know, uh, for homeless as a way of dealing with the homeless problem in in this state. And my question to her, and, and she didn't know the answer, was, uh, is there a residency requirement? I'm concerned that uh, if California, or Oregon, and, and uh, all start getting really aggressive in providing housing for homeless people, that we're just going to see you know, Florida and Texas and Ohio and these red states start putting people on buses out here. Um, what do you think about that? Well, one of the things that they're talking about is having mixed. You're on to something. Thank you very much. Hey, special thanks to Louise Hartman, Sean Taylor, Renate Atwell, Jamie Holly, Joyce the Hammer, Nance, Nigel Peacock, Sue Nethercutt, Patrick Hoyt, Geraldine Halbert, Ron Hartenbaum, Chase Spross, Nicholas Miller, Pat Sweeney, Jay LeBlanc, Al Rhythm, Connor Arroyo, and Carna Verde, all the folks who help make this program run every single day, three hours a day, five days a week right here. Thank you to those folks, and thank you to you for listening, watching, participating, calling, telling your friends, calling our sponsors, letting our stations know, donating to our nonprofits. Thank you. And please get out there, get active, tag your it. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. You've been listening to Tom Hartman. For audio and video archives, visit TomHartman.com.
In addition to being the Tom Hartman program here on Free Speech TV and Video Media Online, we also have a whole lot of ways you can interact with us and tools you can use to spread the word about the importance of democracy and the threats to it in our republic. First, there's your daily homework. Sue Nethercutt puts together a daily email newsletter that has a link to every story I discuss on the air. So you can find my sources and you can share them with your friends. It's free and you can sign up at TomHartman.com. Second, I publish my daily take every day over at the HartmanReport.com website. That's also free if you want the daily five days a week rant in your inbox. No ads either. Third, we have the podcast. There's the free one-hour version of our daily show that's advertising supported. You can find that wherever you get your podcast normally. And then there's also the podcast of the entire three-hour show with no advertisements. And that's available by subscription over at TomHartman.com. So check out at TomHartman.com and HartmanReport.com.